Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 4th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier ran into a good old fake anti-malware scam, and in this case, Meg Affie was impersonated by the phishing email essentially enticing you to renew a McAfee subscription. Of course, the attacker here may count somewhat on you actually using the product, and maybe you're not really sure if it expired or when it is about to expire. Now, if you click on the link, then you get the good old fake scan that will tell you that you are infected with five viruses, actually a relatively small number compared to what some of these tools are advertising. Often Often what follows next is very basically in the simplest case, just take your money. So you'll pay them $30 or whatever it is. And you think you renewed your McAfee license, but you actually send the money to some scammer. In the worst cases, of course, you may end up downloading some actual malware from the website that claims to be associated with the antivirus maker. I've also recently seen a lot of emails that sort of contain fake invoices that claim to be for some anti-malware product. Usually the numbers are very large to scare the victim and the intent then is to either call an 800 number that of course will then uh, runs of the fake tech support scam on you or basically verify that you want to cancel uh, the order by providing your credit card number which then of course will be charged for whatever amount the attacker feels like. Well, fake antivirus is one problem, but we also see occasional vulnerabilities in real antivirus software. Latest example, Trend Micro, the Apex One product, as well as the very free business security product is susceptible to exploitation. Now, the most severe one here is a privilege escalation vulnerability. So the attacker would already need to run code on the victim's system that then uses the antivirus product in order to escalate uh, privileges. There's not a lot of details about the nature of the vulnerability. Uh, for example, a lot of antivirus software is monitoring running processes, so it's not clear if the antivirus would stop the process from running or while it inspects a potentially malicious process, it would actually get exploited. And ThreadPost has a quick advisory regarding some mass account fraud being performed using domains registered via bulk domain registration services. In particular, they are pointing out Namecheap here. Apparently, it costs you a little bit less than $2 to register a domain if you're doing so in bulk via their API. And then these domains are being used to set up legitimate looking email addresses that are then being used to register on e-commerce sites. The article talks about being able to identify over 800,000 fake accounts that originated from 1,800 different domains, so a lot of accounts per domain. Not really clear from the article what the exact monetization scheme here was, whether or not they Basically, we're using the park page, which usually uh, gets you some money for referrals or whether or not they got some additional referrals from the commerce sites or if they just uh, placed some outright fraudulent orders uh, using uh, these email addresses. Defense should actually not be really that difficult. For example, if you all of a sudden have a lot of new accounts from very specific domains, also looking at newly registered domains may help in this case. And then also, in as pointed out in the article, most of the parked pages that were set up for these domains did not use SSL because, well, that's another $10 with Namecheap. And we got an interesting bug in iOS's HomeKit. HomeKit is the part of iOS that interacts with home automation systems and apparently versions prior to iOS 15 allowed you to set an arbitrary long name for a device that then caused a denial of service that would essentially render the device unresponsive. And even just a simple uh, reset of the device would not necessarily solve the problem. 
This could potentially be exploited by any application on the phone that had access to HomeKit, but you do as a user have to provide that access. I could see where maybe someone is sending you sort of a malicious invite to a HomeKit or to a home, and that way that could possibly be exploited as well. Now, as of iOS 15, you are no longer able to set any names that are excessively large, so uh, this bug is no longer exploitable. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.